Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be walking you through painting the tanks from World of Tanks Miniatures game by Gale Force 9. This is just about to come out. Um, it's a beautiful little starter set and it comes with four gorgeous detailed pre-primed tanks. Now because they're pre-primed, they're pre-constructed, uh, you can get straight to the painting and detailing stage and it's very easy to do. I really, in a few hours, I think you could do all four tanks. So let's go through the process and before you know it, you'll have four beautiful little detailed tanks uh, to play your games of World of Tanks miniatures game with. So before we get started, let me show you the kind of results you can get quickly and easily. These are how you get the tanks in the game. As you can see, they're pre-primed. Um, they're also primed in the appropriate colours for the tank, which is just fantastic. Um, they've got a nice matte finish. Now at first I thought I might have to wash these in case there was any kind of, you know, releasing agent or oily surfaces on them. But I did an experiment last night and I painted one up and I didn't even have to wash it first. I just started applying paint directly onto the model and as you can see, the results are pretty amazing. If I did so say myself, I, I think this looks pretty good and it's very easy to do. There's just a bit of um, accentuating of the shadows, a bit of highlighting and then some very simple weathering techniques and you can get a nice weathered looking tank. Now of course you may prefer uh, not to paint your tanks in this sort of weathered style. If so, of course you'll have to ignore all the sort of paint chipping and uh, weathering powders and stuff that I do to make it look used. But I prefer my tanks to look as though they've been out in the field and destroying other tanks. So this is the kind of thing you're going to get. Let's go through the other three tanks, paint them up, and I'll show you how it's done. First up, here's my work area. And I like to get nice and organized before I start a painting session and make sure I have everything I need on hand. So of course I've got my paints. In this case I'm using Citadel paints. You can use whatever brand you prefer. There's the tanks that I'm going to be painting. I've got my Red Grass Games Wet Palette, a lovely product and lovely people over there at Red Grass Games, essential for painting. Uh, I've got a water pot here, well used water pot, my brushes, a pair of tweezers and a little piece of foam. This is from an old miniatures packet but any little piece of foam will do. Uh, I've got some weathering powders, uh, these ones are Vallejo pigments, in this case it's a burnt umber, you can use whatever colour you want. Some crappy old brushes. A uh, piece of paper towel and then finally I've done a little bit of research before I started and I've got some pictures of the actual tanks that I'm going to be painting. These are for reference just to make sure I'm doing roughly the right thing. I'm not too concerned about exact historical accuracy but I want to get pretty close to the originals. And then finally I've got a head loop over here and this is just because my eyesight is uh, not as good as it used to be so I stick this over my head and um, it allows me to magnify what I'm seeing and see all the little detail in there a lot easier. Right then, let's get started. So probably the most fiddly part of the whole process is doing the tank treads. Uh, so I'm going to do that first. And um, the obviously the tread that goes around the outside is kind of a metallic colour. So for that I use lead belcher, which is a nice dark metallic. And just around the edges of the wheels are the tyres, so they'll be in a dark grey colour. And for that I'll use uh, Mechanica Standard Grey, mixed with a little bit of Abaddon Black. So, uh, the first thing to do is do those treads. So, mix up a little bit, or not mix up, get a little bit of lead belcher on my palette. And then carefully paint these treads. You can mix a little bit of water, of course, with your colour to make it flow a bit easier. And you know, don't worry too much if it's not perfect, uh, because you can not only touch up later, but also this area will be quite weathered, so it doesn't matter if it's not absolutely perfect. And the great thing is, of course, is that I didn't have to do anything before I started painting. It's pre-primed. I didn't need to wash it or prepare it or prime it or clean any mould lines or do anything. I can just go straight into the painting, which is a huge time saver. Remember, adding a bit of water to your paint makes it flow a lot easier, especially into little detailed areas like this. 
you can just run your brush over and it should flow nicely into the detail. Um, if you haven't added some water that can be a little bit trickier to do. So don't add enough water that you it becomes all watery and flows where you don't want it to go. But just enough to get it into these little detailed bits. And there we go, we've got our metal tank tracks. Now let's do the tyres. And for that I'm mixing some Mechanica Standard Grey. And a little bit of black to make it a bit darker. And of course adding some water. Probably just about two brushfuls at the most for that amount of paint. And when you've added your paint and you've mixed it up and your brush, just clean your brush again so you get all the paint out of the bit next to the ferrule here. And then it won't dry in there and spoil your brush. So you've got a nice clean brush again before I actually start painting. And then I can keep the paint just on the edge of the tip rather than caking up and drying in there. Now this is probably the most detailed part so just be careful, steady hand and just paint the tyre without painting the rim. And of course don't paint these end ones because they don't actually have tyres um, around them, they're the ones that drive the, the sprocket of the, um, of the tread. These are things of course that I just found out after a little bit of research. I didn't know anything about tanks before now. There we go, that's pretty much the hardest part done. Very easy. Now while I've got that metallic paint here, um, I'm just going to, actually I need a little bit more. I'm just going to paint these uh, tools on the back here, these little axes. Just paint the axe head. Now that's dry, the next thing I want to do is deepen the shadows and all these uh, lines and recesses here. So for that I'm using Agrax Earthshade. Um, you can also, if you want to, use something like Strong Tone by uh, Army Painter. Just a sort of uh, dark brown ink, basically. I'm really running out of Agrax Earthshade here, but I think I'll have enough. There we go. Got a bit on my palette. And for that, using a fine brush, a fine point of a brush, I'm just going to carefully put a bit of ink in there, in these little recesses. Now you don't, again, have to be absolutely perfect with this. Um, because it's ink and it will flow, or it's wash and it will flow nicely into those recesses. And uh, you know, because they're weathered tanks, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit grotty. And that just increases the shadows a bit. Oh, there's another um, shovel there, so I'll have to paint that metal. You can paint the Agrax Earth shape right over that metal area. You can see how it makes those tools just pop out nicely rivets pop a little bit more Down the edge there. And when you're doing these things you can use a finger to wipe off excess paint and move it around a little bit and this uh, we can see all these details start to come out and be more prominent there's another area I've got to put metal just on the edge of that gun Now because the Sherman, uh, the body of the Sherman tank is quite rounded, unlike the other tanks, I don't have to do too much of this. And there's not too many panel lines. Now when I get down into the uh, tank track area, I can be even rougher and just put it over the whole area to make all that detail come out. In fact, I'll do it in the recess as well to just darken them up. I've just got a wash of Agrax Earthshade over the whole area. As always, don't put too much on and if it pulls in an area, just dry off your brush and just soak it up a bit. You can run your finger over there just to highlight the top. Any other panel areas that I've missed down here. And of course the inside, it's up to you whether you bother doing that or not. And of course when you're using washers you can just take them directly from the pot, you don't have to put them on a pallet. Right, for the tank tracks themselves I'm using Null Oil, which is a black wash. And I'll just run that over the actual tank tracks. As you can see, pretty rough. 
don't have to be too careful. Okay, there are our tank tracks. Right, now that's thoroughly dry, it's coming along nicely, I'm going to do some highlights. Now I want to just do some very thin highlights on some of these panels and things, but I don't want it to be too obvious and contrasty. So after looking through my colours, I've got Death, Death World Forest, which is close to the Sherman tank colour, and I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of Shabti Bone. Now uh, I want to keep this very thin, so just do it carefully and paint on all the little edges of the panels and the little rivets. And we're just increasing that sense of scale by shadowing things and highlighting them. You can also, if you want to, just use the edge of the brush on some of these panel lines. Be a bit careful. It's a little bit trickier with this rounded shape of the Sherman tank, but as you can see, I've just done a little bit there and then let it fade out a bit. Now, when I put my turret on, which I've forgotten to do the dark bits on, so I'll do that in a moment. It's going to fill that, so I don't really have to worry about this, but I'll just do a little bit a little bit on the edge. There we go. Now, sadly, I'm using a Windsor & Newton Series 7 here, which is a beautiful brush and quite expensive. Unfortunately, because I'm terrible at taking care of my brushes, it is starting to lose its point a bit, which is always a sad time. It means that I really should buy another one and vow that I'm going to take better care of it next time, and then of course I won't. And then just very carefully along the edge of these panel lines. I'm at a slightly awkward angle here because of the camera, so this is probably not quite as 100% neat as I'd normally do it. I do find painting tutorials a little tricky to film because I've got to get the camera nice and close so you can see what I'm doing but it then also tends to get in my way as well. I've never found quite the perfect angle. Again, just a rough highlight along there. You can do a little bit down here in the tracks, but you know, look, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's going to be pretty grotty down there, so maybe just a little rough highlight like that. Okay, if you want to go really crazy, you could probably add a little bit more shabty bone and just do a little, little bit edges. Just a little bit on the points there, just to highlight a little bit more. And of course, don't forget the turret, which I did before. And I'll do this in reversed order. I'll do the highlights first, and then I'll do the shadowing. You can see it's pretty rough, but you're going to be seeing this from a distance, so it doesn't matter so much. Go back with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade and accentuate those shadows a bit. There we go. And I'll let that dry. A little bit more detail. I'm using uh, Doom Ball Brown as my brown and I'll just paint the shafts of those tools with this. Uh, just that axe handle. And yeah, there's a shovel over here. Maybe just a little bit more highlighting on that bit. The next thing I'm going to do is add a bit of chipping and weathering to the tank to make it look a bit old and used. And this is where we get our little piece of foam. And uh, as I said, this is from a little um, miniatures packet. In the old days, they used to put miniatures in blister packs and put foam in them. Um, but this is, you could get this from anywhere really. Um, the other place you could get this from is um, figure storage, foam, stuff like that. And then I'll get a pair of tweezers. Hold it like that. And then this is my um, dark grey colour that I used for the tyres. I'll just dip it in there a bit. And then carefully go around the edges and just dip little bits of 
chipping and wear. You can see how subtle I'm being with this. And the trick is, is to not overdo it. Do it in areas where you think there'd be more wear. So you want to go on edges, um, possibly places where, you know, people would climb up into the turret. But be quite subtle. Obviously around the top of the turret where it's been worn as it's been opened. It'll just give you that lovely tiny little chipping effect. You see, don't overdo this because it'll look not as effective if it's overdone. And be careful there's not too much paint on your piece of foam when you do it. Don't forget on the treads itself. And you can dab off a bit of the excess paint before you dip it on the model. But I'm doing this with a very light touch. Obviously here on those bits that are protecting the treads, you get a little more, more, you get more chipping at the front where it's little rocks and things have been thrown up. It's super easy, but it gives that very realistic effect. A little bit more around there. Oops, a little bit too much there, you've got to be careful. A bit around the end of the gun barrel, not the barrel itself. And, you know, just keep stopping and looking at it and just thinking, okay, have I done enough? I think you'll find less is more. There we go. And what a difference that makes. So just whoever came up with this technique is a genius. It can be applied to so many models and it works so well. There we go. Now I just noticed that I've forgotten this gun barrel here, so I'll just paint that metal. And already we're really starting to get there. Now I'm using Steel Legion Drab as a nice mud effect. I'm just dabbing this on with a cheaper brush. Splash it on a little like that. Give it a bit of a splashy effect. And there you go. You don't have to overdo it, but stipple it in a bit as well. There you go. Nice muddy effect. Of course, no tank is complete without some uh, symbols on it. And for this, you can either use a very steady hand and carefully hand draw them, which I'm going to do. Or you could get the appropriate decals at the appropriate scale from a hobby shop. Um, I can't be bothered doing that, so I'm just going to paint it on and paint it on carefully. So we've got white stars, obviously, on the Sherman tank. And um, I'm going to use white scar with just a tiny, tiny bit of a shabty bone added, so it's not quite so white. And again, I'm just following my uh, research, the pictures that I've got of the tank. And I'm going to try and get a good enough effect. There we go, I've just made that very slightly off-white. So, there's a star on the side of the turret. And here we go. Wish me luck. First I've got kind of an A shape and a crossbar like that. And then I join these up like so. And then I fill it in. And, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because, you know, these were obviously stencil painted onto the tanks anyway, so they weren't absolutely perfect. There you go, that looks pretty good. Kind of happy with that. Now, uh, when I do this on the body, of course, it's going to be surrounded by some circular lines, which is going to make it even more challenging. So we'll try that. All right, wish me luck. Let's do... Crossbar first.
Oops, a little bit fat there. If I get into there with a bit of water on my brush, I can probably do a little cleanup. Okay. Just put water on my brush and I'll just clean up that edge a little. Or I can use my Death World colour to clean up a bit. It's actually a bit light. Oh, it's getting messy now. There we go. Yes, it's quite challenging. It's a good idea to actually do the star from all angles like this because then it stays relatively even. You don't see it from just one side. Okay, now the next bit is to put the circular lines around it. That's not too bad, but I want to clean up a bit, so I'm going to get my um, Death World Forest here and mix it with just a little bit of grey to kick, make it a bit darker. Let's see, if I'm lucky that's close to my tank colour, and then just clean it up a bit. Ah, this brush, it's just terrible. I've just completely lost it. It's funny that once a good brush goes, it's just gone. There's no getting it back. That's why it's really important to take care of them. Okay, well I said the... Uh, Tank uh, treads were the most challenging part. I was wrong. Obviously, hand painting symbols on is more challenging. Um, it depends, you know, how careful you want to be, whether you want to get decals so they're just right. But I think that looks pretty good, you know, from a distance. That's going to look great. Works pretty well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to do a few more white stars. Another one on the sides here. All right, just a few final touches. A little bit of my foam. And I'm just going to tap a, uh, tap a little bit of weathering over my symbol, just a tiny, tiny bit. So they've been worn as well. And as a final touch, a little bit of weathering powder. This uh, step is optional, of course, but um, I find it gives a nice effect. Get an old brush, dip it in there, and then you can just slap on a bit of dirt and this just weathers it up even more blow off the excess my Sherman tank complete I think that's come out rather well um, the stars, you know, a little bit rough, but we're going to be seeing this from a distance, so it's not too bad. Um, but that's brought a whole new level of realism in. If you look at the, you know, an original tank with no painting, still it's good. You can still play with it. But those very simple techniques has given you a, quite a realistic looking tank. Um, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun to play with. So I'm going to use these exact same techniques on my two remaining tanks. Um, but we do have some tricky challenges with one of them especially. Another extra little bit of weathering you can do is to get some metallic paint. And I've got a tinier brush here just so I can do this. And then just paint some tiny little metal chips inside the grey. And this is where uh, the paint has really just gone back to the metal. And just do this right on the edges. Um, and, and the heavily worn areas, and that just adds a little bit more weathering. But again, be subtle with it. Another good spot is uh, on the top here where the turret opens, because that's going to get scraped a lot as it gets opened. Just on the edges, 
just inside the grey that you've already painted on with the um, with the piece of foam. You know, just, it's very subtle, but it just adds a little bit more of that interesting weathering. Here's the Russian uh, T34 tank, and um, I couldn't find too much reference of this, just ones with some numbers on them. So I've just painted a couple of numbers and put a little red star on the side, kept it pretty subtle. This is exactly the same techniques I used on the other tank, and uh, the only difference is, as you can see, there's some metallic grills on the top, um, but really completely the same. Um, I'll just add some more weathering powder and dirt and everything to the tracks, and finish this one off. This last one is the German Panzer IV and this is a bit more of a challenge. It comes pre-primed in grey but after I did some research I realised that this was a late war model of this tank and it was primarily seen in a sort of tan green and brown camouflage pattern. So I've decided to uh, use my reference and paint it that style and the colours I've used are Zandri Dust Castellan Green and Mornfang Brown. And the first thing I'm going to do is cover this whole prime colour with Zandri Dust. And I'll do it with sort of a rough dry brush um, because I'm not too worried about getting you know perfect coverage because there's going to be a you know a whole camouflage pattern over this. So I will get a larger brush like so, get a bit of Zandri Dust, and then just paint it roughly onto the tank like so. This will give me my base colour. Make sure I get it into all those recesses there. It's a little bit tricky to hold, but just hold it by the tank treads. Okay, that's now thoroughly dry and I've got some reference material here and I'm just going to follow that as I paint on the camouflage pattern. And I'm not going to do that with a brush, I'm going to do it with a Q-tip like this and that will give me a a less sort of brush feel. I could do this with an airbrush of course but you know I really can't be bothered getting out the airbrush and setting it up and cleaning it just for a small tank. So I think this effect should work pretty well. So I'll start with the brown colour, a little bit of dryad bark, just to tone it down a little bit. Let's make it a little bit darker. So I've got my q-tip and put some of that on and let's give this a go. Okay, now I can use a, a clean one just to sort of dry that up and dab it out a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Try not to get it on too wet. It doesn't really look like a spray, but it, 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 it's not too bad. And then uh, my green, which is castle and green, start moving from some of the brown parts and they tend to sort of link together or be close together. That looks alright. Of course this will look even better when it's weathered. There you go, that's looking alright now. I've just got to continue that process across the rest of the tank. Now that I've done that camouflage pattern, I'm just using a bit of, um, in this case, Strong Tone by Army Painter, though you could use Agrax Earthshade, of course. I've just run out of Agrax Earthshade. And again, just putting it in these little panel lines and accentuating those a bit, quite roughly. And I'm just going to do that in the wheels as well. As you can see, I've quickly painted the tank tracks, uh, the treads and the tyres in exactly the same way as I have on the other tanks. The thing I like about painting this kind of thing is that you can be messy. You don't have to be really, really careful. Um, because it is with it weathered and worn, um, so it's okay if it's a little bit messy. Now, we do have panel lines here, so I'm just going to accentuate those. 
little bit more carefully. And of course a bit of null oil on the treads themselves. And then I'll let all that dry. Okay, next up I'm going to highlight some of that area a little bit. So I'll just go back to my original Zandu dust and wipe some of that off in a paper towel and just roughly highlight some of the lighter areas, the khaki tan kind of areas. And then I'll get the um, Zandu dust and just mix a little bit of shabti bone with that just to get a slightly lighter colour and with that just highlight a few little bits lift up a little bit oops that's a bit much these highlights are pretty subtle just on the top edges of the plating like so and a little bit just down the edge of the plates here to accentuate, accentuate them a little bit and then I can mix a little bit of that shabti bone with my green as well and then the same with the brown not being too precise just giving the suggestion of highlights and I think that'll do I've got a space here on the turret for a uh, red uh, iron cross symbol so I'll use a little bit of black I'll use my finer brush for this They also have numbers on here, so I'll put some numbers on. Okay, the next stage is to put on my uh, chipping, my weathering, and then finally a little bit of metal colour, and I'll add a little bit of metal to a few bits of that weathering. There's just a little bit of detail work to be done here. Um, I'll make this um, tow rope here a dark grey and also uh, this cylinder just to make them stand out a bit. A bit of weathering powder on the tracks and it's done. And that one was quite challenging. Um, you know, might have got a better effect with uh, airbrush, but you know, that's still not too bad. I think that does well for a tank at this scale. Um, and it looks well worn and used and will be instantly recognisable on the battlefield. And that's it, my four tanks from the starter set World of Tanks miniature game and they look pretty good I reckon and it really didn't take too lo long to paint these. would have been much faster to paint them if I wasn't filming. I think you could easily do it in, a, in an afternoon. Um, these techniques make them look really good really easily. And you can see uh, weathering powders on there. Now, normally, of course, I varnish my figures in a semi-gloss. I won't for these. I'll use a matte varnish, so I keep that matte effect. And I'm uh, looking forward to getting these on the field. Now, of course, I'll be doing a battle report for this game. Um, and so I'll be able to show you how it works. And uh, I've already played it a couple of times, and it's great fun. It's a bit like Star Wars X-Wing, if you've played that game. A little bit simpler than that, but um, still enjoyable. And of course, the more tanks you get on, the more variety you can put on the field. And you can customise them with uh, various upgrades and things like that. And it's a lot of fun. And I think it's going to look great with these tanks all painted up now. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at how to paint the tanks from the World of Tanks miniatures game by Gale Force 9. If you enjoy my videos, there are hundreds of them to check out. Please subscribe and hit the all notifications button. And visit my website, orderofgamers.com, where you'll find hundreds and hundreds of amazing rule summaries and references for you to download and use for your favourite games. And of course, there'll be one coming up for the World of Tanks miniatures game very soon. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.